Shalom everyone and welcome to this episode of Reboot the Root. On this reboot we are taking a look at what is Passover. Particularly we are remembering the Passover which is the title of this teaching. So join me if you will as we begin to reboot the Feast of Passover. Shalom. Shalom and welcome to Reboot the Root. I want to thank you for joining me once again as we begin our journey together, the journey back to truth. And so uh, welcome to this episode one of a new series that I'm doing that is fit for the feast season that we're getting ready to enter into. We're getting ready to enter into the spring feasts and so I thought it would be fitting to do a teaching about Passover. So per, perhaps you are new to Hebrew roots or the, um, the, uh, the explore, exploration of being messianic. Um, this series, this teaching on Passover is going to be just what you're looking for because we're going to explore Passover from a beginner standpoint. So you're going to get all the information, or at least most of the information you need to know what is Passover. And now if you have been doing Passover already, this might be a also a good video to watch to learn some things maybe you didn't know about Passover. Uh, Passover, like all the other feasts, are something that we learn and add on to our knowledge and understanding each time we do them, but this will come from a very basic uh, understanding or a basic level of Passover. So this this series that we're doing about Passover is called "Remember the Passover," and 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 as you as we get into studying about what Passover is, you'll know that this title title is very fitting because we are commanded to remember the Passover. And uh, before we get any get too far along, I just want to remind you that this is Reboot the Root, and we're all about getting back to the Bible. We're, we're, we're here to investigate what are the traditions, the theology, the doctrines, and the beliefs of what we believe, and we are comparing them to the Bible to, to get a better understanding of God's Word so that we are not creating a religion but we're creating a relationship with God the Most High. And um, so if you've watched my other videos, you know that we take apart our own ideas and we compare them to the Bible and we get rid of the ones that, um, that do not match up in the Bible. And so that, what, that is what reboot the root is. We're rebooting the Hebraic root of Christianity. Christianity was built upon a Hebraic root Christianity was birthed as a sect out of Judaism, but the main difference that happens is that we recognize that is that Yeshua or Jesus is the promised Messiah. So a lot of things that we do in Hebrew roots uh, will look Jewish to some, it'll look Christian to others. But in the end, the bottom line we find with our beliefs is that we are just following the truth that's contained in the Bible. And that's one of the things that we find in Passover is it is um, one of the seven feasts of Yahweh that we keep and in the springtime at this time of the year is when we keep the very first feast. So let's get into remembering the Passover. So I want to start off with three verses 
not necessarily Passover verses, but they are verses that kind of um, kind of highlight what we're doing here with Reboot the Root. Uh, the first one is Jeremiah 18.15. It says, But my people have forgotten me. They have, uh, they have burned incense to what is false, and they have stumbled from their ways, from the ancient paths, to walk in bypaths and not on a highway. Uh, Jeremiah 6.16 says, Thus says the Lord, Stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and find rest for your souls. But they said, we will not walk in it. And our final verse is Deuteronomy 12, 32, which says, everything that I command you, you shall be careful to do. You shall not add to it or take from it. So these are three key verses that talk about what we're trying to do with Reboot the Root. We're trying to get back to the ancient paths. We're trying to find out what is the path that we're supposed to be on and we're remembering to, re to take a look at God's Word and make sure that it's penetrating our lives and that it is the standard that we keep. Um, and so um, we want to find out what does God expect from us? What is God um, compelling us to do by His Word? And so that's what we're trying to find. We are trying to get away what, what way is false and, and get away from uh, the things that we have stumbled in our own ways, trying to do things our way instead of doing it the Bible way. Okay, well that being said, let's, let's move on to remembering the Passover. So I want to start, start by talking about the Passover by quoting from Martin Luther King Jr., uh, and he says, freedom is never voluntarily given by the oppressor. It must be de demanded by the oppressed. And so this is a fitting quote from Martin Luther King that really talks about the heart of Passover, which is Passover, when remembering Passover, we're remembering that the Israelites, God's people, were set free from the enslavement of the Egyptians. And then when we get into New Testament times, we also remember that Yeshua, Jesus, he hung on a cross to set us all free from our oppression of sin. So Passover, New Testament, Passover, Old Testament, they are remembered at Passover time that we were, remember that we were all at one time we were oppressed. Uh, Jack Santino, he says this, is that Passover remains relevant and contemporary while at the same time a ritual thousands of years old. So when we're doing our Passover um, get-togethers and our Passover meals, we will see that um, we are participating in a tradition and a biblical observance that is thousands of years old, uh, somewhere around uh, 3,500 years old. But we're also bringing it into the, not only the New Testament times, but we're bringing it into the millennium. We're bringing it to 2022 to show how relevant and contemporary it really is, even though it stems out of um, Old Testament times. So before we really get into Passover, we really have to find out what is our identity. So our identity in our theology of what we believe is based upon the habitation of scriptures within ourselves. What beliefs do we identify with? And so that's the key question that we have tried to answer in the other videos I've done is what is our identity? We're trying to identify and find ourselves that's within the Bible. The identity of our faith begins with Abraham who crossed over and that is exactly the meaning of being Hebrew is that we cross over. Um, and so when we take on this Hebraic identity, we're not only associating with Abraham, but we're also associating with the Bible itself. And this continues throughout the whole Bible 
as a Hebraic identity because the Bible itself is a Hebraic document. So we need to ask ourselves the question, are we identifying with a Hebrew identity or a Greek identity? Are, so are we identifying with the celebration of Passover um, as we are identifying ourselves with not only our Hebraic roots, but also our biblical roots? So we need to understand first that the understanding of who are the feasts of the Lord for. So we read about them in, um, in Exodus. We also read about, well, them, I say Passover. Passover is written about in uh, Exodus, and it's also written about in Leviticus. And so we read that the, that the feasts of the Lord are for the children of Israel and the children of God. And so that will bring us to our next question is, who are or what is a child of God? And so as we read our Bibles, we begin to understand that a child of God is someone who has an Israelite and a Hebraic identity. So uh, to see that uh, in the Bible, we go to Romans chapter 4, verse 13. It says, For the promise that he would be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to a seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. So what I'm saying here is being an Israelite or a child of God has really little to do with who you physically are, but it has to do with your heart. Uh, it has to do with your faith. If your faith is in Jesus or your faith is in God, then you are connected as a child of God, thus making you um, heir to the promise of Abraham, and ultimately you become uh, the seed of Israel. Uh, the next scripture, Galatians 3.16, it says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He does not say, and to seeds, as of many, but as one. So we're getting into this idea that God's people are one people. There's not a separation between Christians and Jewish people or Israelites, but they are one seed because when we trust in Christ as our, for our salvation, we automatically are enjoined to the one seed, and that seed is Christ. Ephesians 2.12 will say our next scripture, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenant, covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. So what this verse is telling us is that before you were born again, before you became a believer in Christ, you were separated from Israel. You were not Israelites. But once you trust in Christ, for salvation, you are, you are automatically re-entering back into the association and commonwealth of Israel and that you are no longer strangers from the covenants of promise. So when you become born again, you not only become part of Israel, but you also have hope. And this is all talks about it in Ephesians chapter 2. So we need to ask the question, are the feasts Jewish and only for Jews? So I see this a lot, that a lot of people tend to call these feasts Jewish feasts. Um, the, these feasts that are so-called Jewish are actually the feasts of God. So the feasts belong to the Lord, and, those, and thus those who are followers of Christ, which are Christians, are to partake of them. So we look at Galatians 3, 26 through 29 to discuss this matter. It says, For you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as you were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one. Remember earlier I was talking about that we're all one. We were all one in Christ Jesus. 
Jesus. So there's not two different families, not two different groups. There is just, we are all just one. That makes us all Israelites. That means that we're all into the Hebraic family. And it continues to say, and if you are Christ's, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So I have to ask, you have to ask yourself the question, who are the Israelites? I think we would naturally say, well, those are people that came from Abraham. So Abraham's seed would thus be Israelites. But Galatians here tells us that if we are of Christ, we are of Abraham's seed. So that thus makes us um, Israelites. So we need to understand all this before we get into saying, I want to be part of the Passover. So continuing on to look at the, the seed of Abraham, it also says in Romans chapter 11, verse 1, uh, Paul speaking says, For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. So he's identifying who he is. He is, he is of the tribe of Benjamin, which is a seed of Abraham. And, um, and in 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22, he continues to discuss this matter further. And it says, are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? So am I. Are they of the seed of Abraham? So am I. So Paul is identifying himself as an, as an Israelite because of the seed connection back to Abraham. And we also identify ourselves back to the seed of Abraham because of our connection to Christ. Um, Galatians 3.16, Paul is writing, he says, Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. Now we already just read this just a few moments ago, but it's important to bring out because when we're trying to make the connection back to being Israelites, we are identifying ourselves as Israelites because of the connection with Christ. And so it's because of that we are Christians that we can make the connection back to being Israelites. Uh, Galatians 3.29, and it says, and this is a powerful verse, and if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So if you are of Christ, in other words, if you are a Christian, then you are part of Abraham's seed. That would also make you an Israelite. And so the, um, the, uh, the uh, connection that we're trying to make here is, as Christians, are we supposed to be part of Passover and ultimately the rest of the feasts? So we have to understand through all these verses I just read that Christians automatically become Abraham's seed at the born again experience because of Christ. Uh, Craig Hill writes this interesting thing. It says, let's find out what's in the Bible and let's eliminate all the things that are non-biblical even though they're cultural for us. And I would add on to that to say even when they're traditional for us. How do you want me to understand your Moedim? And Moedim is a Hebrew word for appointed times, and Passover is one of those appointed times. So that I can worship you at the times that you declared you like to be worshipped. We have a lot of different holidays, but not these holidays. These are the ones that are the biblical ones. The, these are the ones that God said, I will show up on these times. I have a standing appointment at these times. So before we really get into uh, Passover in this episode, we're not really going to get into Passover, but we're going to talk about what are the feasts. Especially if you're new to keeping the feasts, it's good to kind of know what the mechanics of feast keeping is. So let's talk about the feasts at a glance. And so this will help us to have a list of what all the feasts are that, that God wants us to keep. So the first feast we would do is the weekly seventh day Sabbath or Shabbat. So this is the weekly seventh day Sabbath or Shabbat. <clears throat> so that feast happens every week. Then the first of the annual feasts 
which is not really a feast, but it's more of a meal, is Passover. And that's what we're talking about in this series. Then we go on to unleavened bread, where unleavened bread and Passover are really considered one feast. So when someone, you might hear someone say, I'm keeping Passover for eight days, they would be correct. Because you have the first day of Passover, and then you eat unleavened bread for seven days, thus that would give you eight days. So Passover traditionally is kept for eight days because Passover runs right into unleavened bread. And, uh, and, and at, at a Passover meal, we will eat unleavened bread. Then what we have is called first fruits. And first fruits happens during the um, Passover time. So first fruits will, um, will happen um, right around the same time of, um, of Passover. So, um, and we can learn more about first fruits maybe a little later in another teaching. Um, and then uh, 50 days after first fruits, we have a feast called Shaviot, which is also known as the Feast of Weeks. And so during Shaviot, after first fruits, we start counting seven weeks, and then we um, the 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 50th day is when we all come together and have a celebration of Shaviot, and Shaviot is also known as Pentecost. Then we have that that's Shaviot is a summer feast. It usually happens around June. Um, the first three feasts of Passover and Unleavened Bread and First Fruits are the spring feasts. And then we have a little bit of a waiting time for the fall, usually around September, uh, September and October rather. We have the three fall feasts of Feast of Trumpets, Yom Kippur, which is also known as the Day of Atonement, and the Feast of Tabernacles. And so if you want to read more about how all these other feasts work, besides Passover, or including Passover, then you can go and read about that in Leviticus chapter 3, which describes the feasts of Yahweh at great length. So getting back to our understanding of what some people call Jewish feasts, we have to understand that the Jewish, there is no such thing as Jewish feasts. They are God's biblical feasts. And we see that evident uh, in Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2. It says, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, These are the appointed feasts of the Lord that you shall proclaim as holy convocations. These are my appointed feasts. So if you notice, in this scripture it says nowhere that these are Jewish feasts. These are God's feasts. So these feasts are for Israel and for those who are grafted in or adopted in to Israel. Um, <clears throat> so, we've already read Leviticus chapter 23, verse 2. This is, the, this is the start off scripture for Leviticus 23 that is proclaiming, but before we even read about any of the feasts, we're going to know whose feasts these are. That they're not Jewish feasts, that they are in fact God's feasts. Uh, and we highlight the word, even these are my feasts. And so the, these feasts that we keep in Leviticus 23, these are ones that are initiated by God himself. The Jewish people didn't invent them. God did. Now just with anything that man does is true with the feasts that are in the Bible, that we add some of our own traditions to them. We add our own way of keeping them. Not any two groups of people or two different people will want to keep the feast the same way. As long as it doesn't violate scripture, then that's okay because there are some things that are left up to creative imagination of how you do them. But there are some things that you have to include in the feast to be biblically keeping the feasts. So, um, Man will invent his own holidays, um, reinventing the wheel, and then putting God's name on it. 
And so I'm sure you can think of some um, instances, some examples of how that works is that man will create some holidays and say, oh, this is honoring God. But we have to go back to Cain and Abel where Cain gave God the worship he wanted, where Abel gave the worship that God demanded. And so we want to make sure we're not giving the worship of Cain to God by doing it our way, but we want to make sure we're doing it God's way. And so uh, we need to understand there's a difference between a holy day and a holiday. A holy day is a day that is set apart from all the rest of the year that God um, commanded us to do. A holiday is something that man comes up with and says, this is a day I want to keep and I want to put God's name on it. I'm sure we can see the differences here. So uh, going back to Leviticus 23 2, we see that the feasts are given to the children of Israel. And we've already talked about who, who the children of Israel are. And so we talked about how Christians are Israel through the Messiah. The and we've talked about that the first feast was a weekly feast, whether you call it Shabbat or Sabbath or the seventh day. It's all the same weekly feast that happens throughout the year. And so this weekly feast is actually written about separately in Leviticus 23 from the annual feast, I believe on purpose, because I think God wants to show us and make sure that we understand that there is a difference between the annual feasts and the weekly feasts. Um, and so we've already identified what our identity is by attaching ourselves to Christ and Christ's seed comes by the way of Abraham. And so um, if you understand how the seed of Abraham works, I'm going to give it to you in a very layman's term. It's going to be very abridged. Is First off, we have Abraham, and then he has a son named Isaac, and Isaac has a son named Jacob, and then Jacob has 12 sons that produce the 12 tribes of Israel. In fact, they form the identity, the people, and the nation of Israel. And, and then down the line, we have, um, we have King David, and he has a son named Solomon, and we take it through that lineage all the way down to Jesus, and we see that his seed, his physical the seed, comes by the way of Abraham. So when we are connected to Messiah, we are grafted into Israel through Christ back to Abraham. Um, so uh, I think this is a good place to end this episode of remembering the Passover. I want to thank you for joining me for this first episode of this exciting series about Passover. Passover is one of my favorite times of the year and it can be yours too. And so make sure you join me here again for episode two as we remember Passover. Shalom.